Yes. Uh, Jerry's been in the class how many years, Jerry? How many years you been in class? Eight years. Eight years. Okay. Well, he's got a good testimony. I don't want to take his time. And uh, testimony to two people that have died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ has died for us, so we have salvation in life eternally. And although some of the armed forces, men and women have given their lives, so we men live in the land of the free. God bless them. If we may, I would start out at the, I'm probably one of the most luckiest guys alive, not because I was the only person that that got out of an elevator in the hotel fire alive, but because the Lord Jesus Christ looked on me as a sinner and, and saved my soul. And, and I've, I've walked as far away from the Lord as possible, but he's never walked away from me. Uh, I'll start probably from the many, many years ago, probably before most of you were around. Uh, Great town. Uh, lived on the streets, literally. I had an old Doc Eubank here that took me in one winter. I remember being on the uh, streets in living in junk cars and about freezing it. And he took me in and had me clean his office and gave me a room in an attic. But it was, it was something, again, God's hand was taking care of me. I, as a boy, came to know my Lord and Savior at this church probably in about 1941, I guess, a long, long time ago. But, uh, and during the, my time in the Marine Corps, I received letters from two people, one from my, my mother and the other was from the pastor of, of our church. And he sent me a New Testament Bible, which I still have, I looked for it and couldn't find it, but I came in, that I carried in my hip pocket all during World War II. And uh, in fact, it, it wore out. So I, I had put a new cover on it, and the cover I used was a letter I'd received. And I used uh, this black tape that they use on automobiles. I'd tape the edges of it and looked on it and looked at the stamp on it. It was Raytown, Missouri. It was from the pastor here in 1944. Um, jumping uh, around, I'm going because I. I decided not to make a plan uh, story today, but to, to, to share with you all some of the incredible things in my life. I'm, I'm still amazed every day that God's given me life. I'm firmly convinced that there's one reason is so that I can share that with his help you can face anything in life, because I've faced about everything except uh, roaring tigers, I guess. We uh, get on uh, the story of biggest event for me in the last 30 years is I was in a hotel in Las Vegas at the Hilton Hotel at a convention I had at that time sold the banks and savings and loans over there at the savings loan convention. Um, I finished up the day and went out to walk and get a quick meal and came back and took my shoes off and opened the window to get the stink of Las Vegas out of the room. And I uh, started hearing glass breaking, and I thought, well, it's Las Vegas, it's drunk, you know, in a hotel throwing beer bottles out the window, but I kept, kept hearing it. I finally went to the window, and I, my room was on the ninth floor of Las Vegas Hilton, about a 3500 room hotel at that time, and uh, it was right next to the elevator lobby. And the fire had been harshly set in the eighth floor, I didn't know it at the time, of course, but it started set on the eighth floor, and it was, the fire had already stairs slipped up several floors above me. I ran to the door and felt to see it was hot, and opened it. Of course, the flames were blocking me from going to the stairwell uh, and from the elevator lobby, and I 
Right. Yeah, and Paul, I saw an employee there, and I, I believe he's the arsonist, but we don't know. But, uh, and we fussed at him and said, well, why haven't you been, you know, how to fire or anything? He said, well, don't take the stairwell. He said, take the elevator, which don't ever do. But we took his advice, and uh, we ran into the center, all about 100 feet or so into the center of the hotel where the center elevator was, and we got into that four of us, and uh, we, I knew as soon as we got in there, then we made a mistake. We punched the button, but it went down one floor and it opened our floor. At that time, there were heat sensors on the elevator so that when you touched your finger to it, the heat from your finger then sensed it, so all the lights lit up on the uh, elevator. And then they opened, the doors opened, you couldn't see if there was a wall or anything, it was just smoke poured in on us. Well, I dropped on my hands and knees and felt to see if there was a wall there and there wasn't, so I started crawling. I looked at uh, my briefcase there on the floor, and all of a sudden I wasn't interested in it. And uh, I hadn't crawled 10 feet and I heard one man say, oh my God, and I heard him fall. You know, the, the, the other three didn't make it out of the other. I uh, crawled down the hallway. People asked me how I crawled down the hallway very fast. Uh, I crawled into the fire, and I crawled out. As I was going down the hall, I couldn't hear anything, so I thought everybody was dead in the whole hotel. And I thought, this how hell must be. You know, just nothing except smoke, because it was four to see smoke. It wasn't a breathing space. And I was praying to get out of that hall, and I saw a light. Well, the light was, I wonder what the light doing at the floor. Uh, what's the window doing down there? Well, there wasn't a window there. It was an airline stewardess in her room. She'd been standing on a chair holding towels at the top of the, floor, of the door. And she just looked down and realized she could put a towel at the bottom of the door. And that was the light I was seeing. And she was just jumping off the chair when I knocked on the door and said, help, I'm dying. And she let me in just immediately. I was coming in, spitting up black, and uh, I said, I've been praying to get out of that hallway. And she started crying. She said, I've been praying too, I didn't want to die by myself. So no one will ever convince me that by accident, two Christians were saved in a 3,500 room hotel. You know, just by accident, we were put together. We uh, were in there for about an hour and a half of the fireman got us out. We threw water on the walls. We, we prayed a lot, and we prayed the 23rd Psalm, one of my greatest gifts, I feel, have been given that I saw a newspaper in Las Vegas saying that uh, fire victims recite the 23rd Psalm, you know, and we, we got to share our, our testimony, and the Lord is our shepherd, you know, but he never gives you more than he can bear. We uh, went, I'm going to shorten this up quite a bit, I guess. We uh, went to, I went out, we went down the stairs, the, other, the fireman took us, and they, we went on down, and there was signs saying the triage now pointing down. We didn't realize that the heat had gotten there and it had been taped and it dropped, and actually before we were under, it would have been safe, but we went on down, and actually the fire stairs didn't go outdoors, they went down to the offices. We uh, went on from there on down, we finally got in the dark, down in the basement through the, with the cars where we, we, we got out amidst flying glass. We, uh, I promised her I'd be with her until her mother, her mother was with her at the, at the hotel. In fact, her mother had called the room while we were in there. And she said, well, don't worry, Mom, I, I, there's a man in the room with me. And her mother, like mothers of the world around, said, what kind of a man? Well, fat, bald, and lucky guy, that's a good one. <laughs> we, but, uh, I ran out of steam and they, she went on and met her mother and they took me by an uh, ambulance into the, the hospital. And the, the triage there was incredible. We, uh, when I see these round tables, I think there was, I and another lady were both being triaged in on the, one of the uh, uh, jumping racks they had there and uh, she was, from another country and couldn't speak English, and she was having a baby. Well, I reached over and told her that 
don't worry, you know, I said, God didn't lead us through that horrible place to, to, to have you, you know, or your baby die now. And she quieted down, and I've thought about that many times since. That, you know, in the midst of death, there's always life. We, uh, I came back to Kansas City. I was in the hotel, or in the hospital that night. The, I started to take a shower in the morning, and all of a sudden, the, the water was burning my skin. I realized I was, I was in worse shape than I thought. I came up with tar balls of chemicals from the smoke I'd ingested that, that night. And I, I decided uh, their hospital was overloaded. They, I wasn't in the burn unit because the burn unit was full of firemen. You know, God bless them for what they do to risk their lives for the lives of others. I pray for them every day. Uh, as I pray for the young lady that opened the door to me, she's probably not so young now, but Kathy Dotson, she's from Atlanta, Georgia. Um, I'm blessed, so I don't want anybody to, I'm not asking for sympathy or anything, I'm just relating my story. My wife, probably 30 years, when I got to Kansas City, uh, decided she couldn't handle it because I was on crutches. I was using an oxygen bottle at that time, which I later shot and buried, but I used it for about five years. And uh, when life laughs at you, you have to laugh back. That's all you can do, man. And I do that. I'm, I'm blessed with it each day, and I know it, and I want to share it. Um, there is, when I got home, I lost, I found my company dropped me because their insurance didn't cover me. So I, I lost my job, I lost my family, I lost my health all in one day. But I didn't believe my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So I uh, am firmly convinced that with, I've had literally hundreds of surgeries. I probably you all have seen me in here wearing a bonnet sometime or other uh, over the years. Unfortunately, this summer I've been blessed with it for the first time in 30 some years. Not, and that, but that happened back in 1981, so it's a lot of years, but I'm, it's very close to me because it still uh, tickles my fancy once in a while. I, have, I get whittled on. One of the things I do in uh, Shawnee Mission Med Center, I was, I'm number 10 in their hospital. I was there the first day they were open. So I'm the first perfect 10 they had. I uh, have had, as I say, hundreds of surgeries from, oh, I've had neurofibromas in between my toes, even. Up uh, along the, uh, all the vertebrae, I've had neurofibromas taken, so I've got, back. I always have one that feels like there's a mouse running around back on my shoulder, because there's uh, some, uh, something going on there. I've uh, had skin grafts, Get skin off my legs. In fact, I've got, you probably can't see it, but there's a scar here. And there's one here where they took the grafts and put them up so it'd be close to the burn area. And I'm the only guy in town with matching scars. <laughs> we, uh, one of the things that I do, there, I have a Catholic lady who is our plastic surgeon. Uh, she's been on me for several years now. And in the wound care unit at Shawnee Mission Med Center. And I always sing. I love singing. I'm not good at it, but this old boat's still in the choir, but they put up with me. You know, I sing because he lived. I can live tomorrow, see tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because he loved, you know, God holds you in his hand, and that great song of the Gators. I sing every time I go in. In fact, at Christmas time, we would become a tradition with the, my plastic surgeon is a, is a soloist in her Catholic church, a beautiful voice. And, and she and I always sing Silent Night. Silent Night, Holy Night. Uh, I just, uh, I'm touched by words and remember them. My, uh, I'll get into a lot more of the interesting things in my life in the moment, but, one of the things is because of the brain surgery I've had, why I, I have dyslexia. So sometimes I'll think one word and say another. I just laugh about it. So same way I might call you Guy. In fact, I had somebody recommended me recently for calling him Guy. Well, I can't remember name and faces. I remember people. Uh, and uh, no excuse, just, just the way life is. So I, 
But I've, I've had uh, surgeries for whole uh, blood clots, my lungs. Uh, I, uh, for a couple of years, I used to have to uh, go in there and spray saline solution in my lungs to wash the, 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 the chemicals out. Um, and that's interesting because you feel like you're drowning every time you get that. Um, in fact, I uh, have been blessed with so many things, that, uh, unfortunate things, but there's always a, a reason for it. You know, God, God given, gives you there no more than you can bear. He does, he's going to take you home. I'm firmly convinced of that, and I'm sure that's why he's left this old world around. You know, it's, it's to be blessed. Uh, I'm going to hop from the, the surgeries. I've, I've had, there's no place on me I don't have scars. You know, that's why they start on a fat man, because they got a lot to whittle with him. <laughs> he, uh, but I'm, I'm still here, you know, because and I, I hobble around on a cane, and uh, I don't like it any more than anybody else does, but that's uh, what God's given me, but he's given me the greatest gift of life, today and eternally. Uh, some of the other things, I've had many, many interesting things in the half of my life. Just the right. If I may, one real quickly, then I uh, had a illegal immigrant in a truck hit me head on about 60 years ago, and uh, I was traveling then. He, I was, he swerved over. I was parked at a, at a, at a stop light. Uh, hit me head on. Fortunately, there was a police car right behind me, God's hand again, and they didn't wait for an ambulance, they, they came and took me to the hospital. I've got a depressed skull fracture, I've got a plate in my head here, and then I have a hole between my eyes here that uh, at that time they didn't know how to repair. I've got about 30% of my brain and frontal lobe removed, so I had to learn memory over again. So that, that's one of the, that's my excuse for uh, and that, but again, God never gave me more than you can bear. I, I've, I've been so blessed. Uh, in fact, I have a, a spinal fluid leak. That, so for about a year, uh, I didn't put a plate in my head. So I went for about a year, and I, I had a small baby that I had to work. So I called on the one bank, and the uh, woman stood up and shrieked and fainted. And I didn't have a plate in my head, because you can see my brain pulsating. pulsating that's the pulsating of life. I uh, am getting the sign here, so I shut. I've got about a thousand other stories, so to be continued. Thank you all for your. God bless. You. On behalf of Dan Hurst and the Open Class, we want to thank you for watching. We hope it was a blessing.